This right here is the BYD Seagull, and with a starting price of around $10,000, this thing could be the automotive bargain of the millennium, and you might actually be able to buy one of these cars in the US sooner than later. Possibly, maybe, potentially. You know, every country has its own iconic vehicle. For us in the US, it's the Ford Model T, but Germany's got the Volkswagen Beetle, there's the 2CV and DS for France, and this new BYD, Build Your Dream Seagull, might be China's transformative automotive nameplate. This car is kind of a big deal, but the company is also, of course, building a manufacturing plant down in Mexico, which seems to pretty strongly indicate they might eventually import the Seagull to the US, though if they do decide to do that, I might suggest changing the name, if only because when I hear Seagull, I think, I think more of a Taco Bell parking lot than I do some sort of Oceanside resort. But regardless, this is a very interesting car, and since we're at the back, let's first things first check out the cargo area. There's a small rubberized button down here underneath the lip, if I press that, it pops open just like that. Of course, it is not motored. This is not power assisted in any way, but you don't need that. And I'll tell you, it opens very smoothly. This feels like a quality piece of engineering right here, not some junk you would expect for a $10,000 price tag. Surprising amount of cargo space in the way back. And of course, the rear backrest will drop down if you pull a couple lanyards like that to further improve the versatility of the seagull here. So really, kind of, we're off to a good start. Off to a very good start, but there's a lot more of this car to see, so let's move along the side here. This is an A-segment vehicle. Obviously, it is a hatchback with four doors or five, depending on how you count. And the overall length of this vehicle is about 149 inches, and the wheelbase is 98 inches and change, which makes it just a little bit longer than the Chevy Spark, if you remember that vehicle. Very interesting thing to point out here, alloy wheels. Who would have thought you'd get those on a car costing just $10,000? And also, while we are at the back, you'll notice this thing has disc brakes. Again, on a super, super affordable vehicle. That's frankly kind of shocking. And you look at other EVs, like the Volkswagen ID4, for instance, and that comes with rear drum brakes. And of course, those do offer some important benefits for electric vehicles, pr primarily reduced friction, but it's still very surprising to see discs on a $10,000 car. Moving along, the very first interaction I had with this car was right here. I opened one of the doors and I was immediately blown away because the handle is, it, it operates with well-oiled slickness. The hinges are smooth. The door stays are not overly stiff or floppy. The swing panels feel as good as anything you'd get from Ford or Honda or Toyota. They've done a really nice job. Also, the build quality, panel gaps are consistent. The paint looks good. All the rubber seems to fit well. So $10,000? Very impressive. Now, I would also be remiss if I did not point out this text here because this particular car is owned by a company called CareSoft. They're an automotive benchmarking, engineering, and consultancy firm, and they've really torn this thing entirely apart. Anyway, moving further forward, again, we talked about alloy wheels, but let's check this out right here. This is the charging port. It uses a couple of Chinese market sockets. I'm not familiar with, with what they are, but this one should handle your DC fast charging. This one will be the equivalent of level one and level two. So that's how you, you put juice into the battery. And how do you use that stored electricity? Well, there is a single, whoops, front mounted electric motor. It is probably pretty hard to see under the hood there, but that should get you about 74 horsepower. It's not gonna set the world on fire, but you know, in dense urban areas, that's probably more than you need. As for battery packs, expect a roughly 30 kilowatt hour LFP assembly as the base pack. Then they have a slightly larger one that uses BYD's blade cell assembly that clocks in at just shy of 39 kilowatt hours. And those should provide an estimated 405 kilometers of range on the Chinese testing cycle, which works out if you convert to freedom units, that's about 252 miles of range, which again, how do you argue with that for $10,000?
But I'll tell you, there's even more great stuff inside the Seagull, so let's see if we can't pop a door and check out the cabin, because this might even be more impressive than the outside. Clean and elegant design. You get a pair of bright and colorful touchscreens, or at least one touchscreen on the center of the dashboard and a digital instrument cluster. The switch gear and steering wheel feels nice. You've got a suede-like material on the dashboard. There's lots of soft plastic as well, wrapped surfaces. There's French stitching on the seats, and you might get a better look at it on the door panels as well, with some contrast color thread in there. Nice vinyl quality on the seats, and the French stitching, it's it doesn't necessarily cost a lot more, but it takes time and effort, and you can see it really adds a nice touch, whether it's, you know, a Lexus or a Seagull here. It just adds a little bit of visual pizzazz. Uh, seat comfort is great in this car, too. I sat in the front buckets earlier. They're very nice. And even in the rear, legroom is a little bit tight, but my knees are not touching the seat. And I've got tons of headroom as well. The backrest kind of leans back nicely. And honestly, I could be comfortable in the back of this little car for many hours at a stretch. Very impressive stuff, especially for the price. A new vehicle and a pretty good one at that price to just $10,000 is a screaming deal. I mean, you can literally spend more money on a golf cart. And I think the BYD Seagull is just the sort of back to basics EV that the world really needs. But the real question here is how this Chinese automaker was able to build a legitimately nice vehicle for such an incredibly low price in the case of this particular example, around $11,500. Though if the Seagull is ever sold in the US, and that's a big if, you can bet it will cost a lot more than that because of our regulations. But even at, say, I don't know, 20 grand, this car will still be a bargain. Now, CareSoft reps tell me BYD's vertical integration enables them to control every step of engineering and manufacturing, which allows them to closely control costs. Also, they say there's no magic bullet here, no single revolutionary innovation that lowers the price. This car's overall design is very basic and simple, though extremely well executed. Competing automakers around the world should fear the Seagull. Uh, no, actually, I take that back they should be absolutely terrified. Now, it's unclear whether this vehicle will ever be offered in the US. I mean, Americans like big vehicles, and this car certainly is not. Additionally, some drivers will be reticent to purchase a Chinese manufactured vehicle, something that is echoed by certain lawmakers. There are real concerns about cybersecurity with this EV, as well as the effect it could have on US manufacturing jobs. In fact, the Seagull was called out, by name no less, as an example of why Chinese electric vehicles should be banned from the US. Despite its tiny size, this hatchback is already causing huge controversy. Still, consumer preference and certain political issues aside, this BYD Seagull is almost unimaginably nice for the price they're charging. Next up, if a small city car meets your needs, there's a fantastic one that you can buy today. Click right over here to check out my first drive review of the 2024 Fiat 500e.